In this game development quick tip video, we'll show you how to quickly and easily create a Cyberpunk 2077 inspired sci-fi 2D parallax scrolling environment. First, we'll create a new scene using our 2D templates to ensure that it imports all our appropriate packages. If you're not starting a new project and like to add this to an existing project, we can go to our Windows, Package Manager, and install all the appropriate 2D packages into our project. Next, we'll import our sprites into our scene. Since we use the 2D project template, our images are automatically set to sprites the moment that we bring them into our scene. With our sprites now imported, we can now separate any of the individual sprites that we have on a sprite sheet with multiple sprites. To do this, we can simply select our sprites and in our sprite mode, we can set that to multiply and we hit apply. And then we can then go to our sprite editor and we can individually slice our sprites or we can hit our slice button to have Unity automatically do it for us. And since we'll just be using this for our environment, to better optimize our scene, we can set our mesh type from tight to full rectangle. With our sprites now set, we can now begin placing them into our scene. By adjusting the sprite sorting order, we can adjust how the sprites are sorted once they're rendered. At this point, we want to line all of our elements up and make sure they begin at the edge of the camera. Next, we want to duplicate each of our scrolling background elements and make sure its position is set to begin right as the other element ends. In the end, we should have a mirror version of our sprites directly beyond the edge of the camera. Next, we'll create an empty game object and we're gonna call that background and we're gonna place all of our background elements in this game object. Next, we wanna create empty game object to house each set of moving sprites and we wanna make sure the pivot point is at the bottom edge of the camera. So we should now have a parent game object for everything except our sky background. And within the parent game object, each of our sprites are separated. Next, we wanna open up our animation window. We wanna now select the sprite that we wanna animate and we wanna click create. And we're gonna name and save our animation. With our animation now saved, we're gonna change our sample rate to 24 and we want to add the transform position property for our parent object. And we also want to add the transform and position for the sprite that we can currently see within our camera view. And we want to add the sprite render enabled property as well. So we're going to go to frame 120 and we're going to move our keyframes to that mark. And now we're going to hit record in our animator and we want to slide our sprite to where the first sprite falls just off the edge of the camera.
and we're going to disable that sprite and we're going to go to our very next frame we're going to enable that sprite and we're going to move it to the end position of our sprite that's in frame we're going to go to frame 240 and then we're going to reposition our sprite to the position where the first one started so we're going to take off record mode and we'll, let's go into our play and we're going to preview that and we can now see since our animation is set to loop we have an endless parallax scrolling With our sprite selected, let's go back into our animator and we're gonna go into our position and we're gonna go to our curve and we're gonna get our X position. And instead of that slowing down and starting, we're gonna select our curve and we're going to left click and we want to make that a linear interpolation. And doing this allows our parallax to move at a constant rate. So it no longer slows down and speeds up at the beginning of the loop of our animation. So with that complete, we're going to do the same thing for the other sprites in our scene. With all of our animations complete, lastly, let's add our flying ship element to give a little bit more life to our scene. And with our ships in place, next we create two empty game objects and one we're gonna have for our first set of ships and the second one we're gonna have for our second set of ships. So with our ships now in place, let's create an animation similar to how we did for our other sprites in our scene. But for this animation, instead of it going backwards, we're gonna have that going forward. With our ships in place and all of our animations complete, we can now go into our animator and we can adjust the timing of our animation to slow elements down or speed elements up. If we now look in our scene view, well originally when they were all disappeared at the same time, we can now see with the offset that we have on our timing that is adjusting our parallax and we're able to slow down or speed up the time until we get the effect that we're looking for. And in our game view, we can see that it appears to the player that we're getting an endless parallax effect with only using a few sprites and a little bit of animation. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.